What's up, YouTube? TCM here, back with another video. And today, I'm going to show you some more creepy OSINT or open source intelligence. What if I told you that through password recovery on different websites, I can find out a lot of information about you as a user? I can potentially find alternate email addresses. I can potentially find phone numbers. I can potentially tell what type of authenticator app you're using if you're using a YubiKey or something similar. I can even tell what type of phone you are using. This is very, very interesting stuff. I recently been working on a case and I knew about some of this. I didn't realize how far this went. So a lot of this is my own research. I'm going to share a lot of that with you today. I think it's very exciting and hopefully you're just as excited about it as I am. So briefly before we get started, Please, please do consider smashing the like button, subscribing to the channel. We just passed 400,000 subscribers, and I'm so very, very thankful for that. We're 600,000 subscribers away from getting that gold play button, and I really hope that all of you join me in this adventure along the way. So with that out of the way, let's take a quick word from our sponsor, and we're going to hop right in to our video. There are a ton of vulnerabilities out there, from remote code execution to prototype pollution and even SQL injection, just to name a few. As an ethical hacker, I love exploiting these types of vulnerabilities, but also running a development team, I hate seeing these types of vulnerabilities show up in our applications. That's where Sneak comes in. Sneak automatically scans your code, dependencies, containers, and configurations, finding and automatically fixing vulnerabilities in real time. So here's how easy this is. You can use my link, sneak.co forward slash cybermentor. Come to the landing page here and hit sign up. Once you're signed up, you can come in here and add a project. I'm going to select a project from GitHub. And once your project's imported, Sneak finds your vulnerabilities and you can fix them with just a click. Watch this. I come into here, I can open a fix PR or a pull request and sneak opens fix PR so you can merge and move on. Plus it does it all from your existing tools, IDEs, CLI, repos, pipelines, Docker hub, and more. And look how easy that was to just do a pull request with these issues in hand. It's amazingly fast. So what are you waiting for? Come check out sneak and find out if there's any vulnerabilities within your projects. It's free, and you can sign up using my link at sneak.co forward slash the cyber mentor. So as part of an OSINT investigation, when we uncover an email address that is tied to a user, one of the things that you can do is you can go and validate some information about that user. You can typically do that using the email addresses login feature and the forgot password feature. As we're going to see here with Gmail, I'll also show you another example as well. But if we come to Gmail, we just go to sign in and I'm going to hit one that I'm very fond of, which is please don't hack me, sir, please. And I put that at gmail.com, come in here and just hit next. And first of all, what this does, let me make this just a little bit bigger. What this does is this validates here that this is actually an active Gmail account. So this is one thing. This is username enumeration. We know that this account is valid because if it wasn't, we wouldn't get to this enter password screen. The next thing that we could do is we can come in here and say, hey, I forgot my password. Oh, no. What do I do? Well, Google is so kind to say, OK, I'll help you recover this. All you got to do is enter in the email associated with the account. Well, in this instance, this is just a dummy account. It's set up to be me. So. What's interesting is it tells you specifically the email address uh, in terms of length. OK, so like my first email address is five characters. It's my name. Hey, guess what? You could probably figure out the second part of that right here. OK, uh, so with that, we can determine is this a Gmail account? Because if it's a Gmail account here, they'll actually tell you it's Gmail. And then they'll just give you a couple extra characters on this side of the house. And that's pretty cool. Uh, we could come in here and see that detail and that's that's interesting so we can figure out okay well maybe we know one email address and maybe we found a second email address through osint and we want to validate that that is tied to this we can come in here and say hey we're not 100 percent sure but there's probably beyond a reasonable doubt on some of this that hey yeah this ties into exactly the email address and it's the length same format same everything you can be pretty sure that that is the person that you're looking for. 
Uh, you can sometimes come in to try another way. I don't know if I have anything set up on this one. I don't. So this is the only uh, recovery that I have. I only have my email address on here. So in this instance, I don't have any other info that I can provide Google. But some people use a lot more. So this is a real user. So we're going to block out the username. But it's asking for a security key. So this person maybe has something like a YubiKey. Maybe this person's in cybersecurity and they maybe understand a little bit more about multi-factor than the average individual. But regardless, it's asking for security keys. So we know this person uses security keys. Very interesting. If we come in here and we hit try another way. Now it's going to ask for a phone number. And what does it do to us? It gives us part of their phone number and it even gives us some spacing. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and then we got a space one, two, three, four, five. I know the country that this relates to. You can do some research and enumeration as to what it could relate to here, but we know that this person's phone number ends in four zero. This is something that we can use to confirm a phone number that we have for an individual and if it ties to them. Really, really interesting OSINT. Another Google recovery feature here is using one of your backup codes. So this person has an eight digit backup code, meaning they have multi-factor authentication enabled and we can use one of those backup codes if we want to get into their account. So that's interesting. For this user, we can see that they're using multi-factor authentication as well. They have the Google Authenticator app that is asking for a code from. So we have a little bit of detail about what applications they might have on their phone. They have the Google Authenticator app. Here's another one where we're trying to log into an account and we're getting a wonderful ad from Yahoo on this for House of the Dragon. Great show, by the way. Uh, we go into forgot password and we could see some data about this here. We got the first letter, a couple last letters on this, and then we get a Gmail account. Yahoo's so kind to just give us a Gmail account and they give us pretty good phone number. Look at this. This is a uh, US phone number and we can see first digit, which really narrows down what city it could be in. And then the last two digits here. So this gives a lot of information about a person where we can actually narrow down what city they're in uh, or a handful of cities based on the first number that's here. Uh, so that's pretty interesting as well. So you just do with open source intelligence, a lot of process of elimination, a lot of tying uh, bits of information together and confirming accounts. And this is a lot of what it is. But let's look at the really cool feature that I saw. Now this I'm going to have to show you a picture for because Unfortunately, the account recovery process is hit or miss. If you do too many account recoveries, Google can detect that and it'll say, hey, slow your roll. Uh, make sure that you are actually the account owner. So because we're being rate limited a bit and because I need to get this video out, um, I'm going to show you the picture that I have here. So in this instance, never have I seen this before. Very, very cool. What we can see is the phone ownership. When we came through here and we did account recovery and we're looking at this account, it said, hey, get your X4 Pro 5G out. And it's like, OK. And I just happened to click on it and it dropped down. Hey, get your rest of your phones that you've probably ever owned and tied into this account out. And let's use one of those to get a security code from your phone. Very, very interesting, very different. This is exposing like the previously we were only seeing phone numbers, right? Or partial phone numbers or partial email addresses for this account recovery in particular. We we're able to see a phone number. We we're able to see an email address and we were able to see specific devices that the user owned. When you are doing an OSINT investigation, this is incredible. Um, very, very, very specific here. And this is great detail, especially if you're working with like law enforcement or something along those lines and you're handing this off to law enforcement if you could say hey there's a very good chance that this person uses a poco phone i've never even heard of a poco phone before so it's it's very interesting to say hey like they've owned two of these uh there's a good chance that they're going to own another one so um something to pass off if you're if you're doing that or if you're giving this to an organization that's asked you to do osin on an individual or even an organization uh, this would be something that is very valuable information, something I learned. I never have seen this before. And it just goes to show that password recovery features are very, very creepy. So as always, we talk about the attack, but let's talk about the defense here as well. If you're going to set up account recovery, perhaps a good idea to have good operational security or OPSEC 
would be to use a burner number. You can use something like a Google Voice number that nobody knows. Google Voice is 100% free. I have a Google Voice number that nobody knows, and I use it for a lot of my two-factor authentication and a lot of the backup codes and stuff that I have. So it's very useful. You can set up a burner email that only you know and have access to and would never tie back to you in any other way because you've never used it to log in anywhere, sign up for an account anywhere. It's literally just been your email for recovery. Something to think about because a lot of times when we tie people to other accounts, it's because we see like a breach data. Like if we go search breach data and we search an individual's name, especially if the name's unique, and we come up and we see, hey, they've got multiple accounts. Uh, maybe they have a Gmail and then they have a Hotmail. They have something along those lines. Well, we can go in there and we can say, OK, let's try to validate that this person is who we are. So we don't go on a wild goose chase and just hunt down some person with a very similar email address. Uh, we go and we say, hey, let's do a password recovery. Does this match? Is the Gmail password recovery a Hotmail with the same first few letters? In that instance, we probably then know, hey, we're on to something here. So it's a great way to validate and tie in other accounts to users. And if you want to throw people off their tracks, use an alternate email that nobody will ever know. You've never logged in anywhere, could never be involved in a breach unless that breach happened to be the email server. Uh, so that's great. And then phones, again, phones. Don't use that phone anywhere else except for account recovery. Uh, try to have good operational security and you can prevent a lot of this from happening to you. But I encourage you to go take your email address now, do a password reset, and just click through the try next step and just see what's out there for you, what, what is being offered for you in terms of what can be disclosed about your information. So that's all I have for this video today. I will see everybody next Tuesday for our next video. So until next time, my name is the Cyber Mentor and I do thank you for joining me. Peace out.